What? Oh, look at this pretty brown girl. What do you think, Daddy? <laughs> what do you think, Odin? <laughs> He's not sure. Oh, Liam likes them. Yeah. Rowan likes them. Look at your sweet little face. Oh my gosh, she's so calm. She's like cuddling me. You like me already? <laughs> you want to come home with me? Tell Ryan you want to come home with me. Oh, she's really chill, baby. Mm -hmm. Does she like? She likes Rowan. <laughs> These boys need a street daddy. <laughs> you don't have to disperse them. They don't have hands. I didn't realize that. Getting to go to the sheep farm during lambing season has got to be the best thing in the world. All these babies to play with. I love them. Did you find any chicken eggs in the coop? Nope. Nope. Where else did you look? In the cow paddock. The cow paddock? Yeah. You mean the cow house? Yeah. Didn't see them there either? No. All right, let's look in the woods. Okay. All right, Ryan said he saw some chickens come from this direction in the woods. I can't think of any reason why chickens would be in the woods other than to hide some eggs. Hmm. Let's see. So when we're looking for nests, we look for areas that are like protected underneath sticks maybe. No, I don't see any there. Or protected in other ways like up against the base of a tree. Like that would be a perfect spot for a nest. But I don't see any eggs, not yet. Well, we can't find anything back here. So I guess it's back to checking the yard. I don't know where these chickens are hiding their eggs. I did find something in the woods though. Some more Exidia amber jelly roll fungus. We just used this for our pho and it was awesome in the soup. So I'm really excited to have more of this to add to our meals. There was a spot right here where they were laying in between the wood, but it's no longer being laid in. They were laying under this, but they're no longer laying there. Laid in here a couple of times, but no longer laying in here. We've checked here, we've checked there. Feels like we've checked everywhere. So I was just coming to say that we've checked here because they used to have a nest over here. They haven't been laying in it. And just out of the corner of my eye, I, what do I spy? Thank goodness for duck eggs being white because I wouldn't have seen these otherwise. So that's still only a couple of eggs. So three days worth. Yeah, so we've got three duck eggs and then three of that color and whoever that odd looking one is. So still not a big jackpot nest like we were expecting, but a few eggs extra. Over here, right at the base of that tree was a spot that they used to lay. No more. The thing that's bothering me about this is after a while, you get used to learning how to find the nest, knowing where the most likely locations are for them to lay in. We've checked all of the spots that they would likely lay in and haven't found a thing. So we know that there is a huge stash somewhere. I'm talking, it's gotta be at least 30 eggs somewhere around here. And it can't be far because they don't go far. They used to lay right there but there's no more in there either. And did you find any eggs? Look, did you find any eggs? Look. Oh, he just wants to feed. He's like, no, I just want to feed. Was that you, Squirty Birdie? No, you don't lay a blue green egg. This one. I've looked under every tree, every bush, every wrap of lumber and bucket that's been left out. You name it. 
I don't know where they're laying these eggs. It's really getting to be a mystery. The good news is, is we do have a plan. We're going to build our chicken coop whenever we have time. And we are going to do a locking them in until they lay and then letting them out in free range. It's just, there's no other way around it. We can't not have our eggs. And it would make me really sad to finally find a nest and have it be rotten eggs. Don't want that. Guys, guys, really, you can wait till daddy gets over there with your food, can't you? Do they do this to you every day? It's the rolling food buffet. <laughs> you taught them that, didn't you, Squirty Birdie? Squirty Birdies are only named chicken. Well, that's not true. We kind of have named cheeks or freckles. That one right there. She purred But Squirty Birdie is our tame one. The kids raised her as a chick from Robert at Daybird Aviaries. And she loves her people and her food, whether it's dog food, goat food, or chicken food. Oh, they even go with him. You silly birds, going for a ride. They're just like kids. They flock to their leader. <laughs> Get it, flock. <laughs> They're all going, chasing daddy. Gonna get the good food. Feeding time. Oh, that's a pretty rooster. It's one of the ones we hatched. Don't know which mix it is, but pretty. He's Muscovy from Robert at Daybird Aviaries. Love it here. They like free ranging. And here come the pigs running for their food. You guys know what time it is, don't you? You know what time it is, huh, Bowser? Come on, big guy. Little guy. <laughs> He's so cute. What you got? You hungry? Well, it may not be the huge stash we were hoping for. We did get a few eggs today. This is a little bit sus. One of our chickens is heading over into the neighbor's yard. It's a weird time of day to be laying an egg, but it's also a weird time of day for a chicken to be not with the others getting all the food. I wonder if she's got a hidden nest in Miss Elsie's yard. She saw me or heard me and stopped. <laughs> Chickens are sneaky. I got out of her line of vision and she started running towards that shed. Oh, I gotta be able to follow her without her hearing me. It's hard because the leaves are coming through. Okay, she's going underneath in that way. Let's see if I can find her. Granted, this is only one bird going over here to lay eggs, if, if it is the case. But if I can find her nest, she just went right around this corner. Is that where she's laying? Oh yeah, that's where she's laying. Well, at least we found her eggs. Jeez. So we got about two dozen of my lavender olive eggers eggs. That still doesn't account for all the golden common eggs, the other olive eggers, the Easter eggers, the Rhode Island reds, the Nick Nicks, none of their eggs to be found. I guess that's all we're gonna find. Odin found the water hose. I mean, now we need to go in. It's too cold to be getting yourself wet. He got his hair all wet. His little hands are popsicles now. What? Why'd you do that, silly boy? Huh? He's my little bruiser. Took a dive off of the <laughs> chair the other day and 
cracked his eye bone. Ouchie. Let's bring you in and cool you off, okay? No. He's mad because I took him away from the water. No more eggs today. Getting ready for sushi night and pho. So we're gonna use all of our build your own sushi and pho. It's gonna be so delicious. Got a homemade venison bone broth pho broth. So I added cinnamon sticks, star anise, cardamom, coriander, ginger, garlic, seems like there was something else. And I simmered it until it was full of flavor. And then I strained those out. There's little bits and pieces still of ginger floating. And then I added a little bit of fish sauce. I have rehydrated the Exidia Jelly Amber Roll Fungus. We're gonna be adding this to our pho. Yum, yum. <laughs> Don't mind my turmeric stained nail <laughs> and my bruise. We've got venison backstrap to add to our pho along with basil and cilantro and sprouts. They're not bean sprouts, but they didn't have any at the store. Some uh, quick pickled onions. And then if anybody wants to add anything else, they can, but the rest of the stuff is for homemade sushi. All right, we got everything ready to make our own pho and sushi and poke bowls. Yum, yum. And just like that, my raw tenderloin is now cooked. And I have a delicious bowl of pho. Oh, this is going to be so good.